Hey guys, welcome back to Reverse 1999. In today's video, we are talking Melania. She is the first exclusive banner that we are getting on Global, and she is coming at the time of recording this in three days. Uh, so I wanted to go through, take a look at her, take a look at her kit, give you guys my thoughts around it. Not only her base kit, but she also has a really great portray, which I know won't apply to most people, but I do want to touch on that as well, because I think it's a very interesting thing to look at. But I want to look at like her rotations, what I feel her rotations will be. Uh, a touch on Psycubes, because we get a fantastic one for her and stuff like that and the basic question of should you pull for her which i know everyone is going to ask on every banner so i'm going to go through all of that stuff in this video uh and if you have any questions or anything you think i missed please leave it in the comments and i'm happy to follow it up or answer questions in the comments as well so let's get into it okay so first of all should you pull for melania now there's a couple things we need to look into uh and talk about there is no straight answer for this question so i'm going to give you guys the considerations and then you guys have to think about it and answer that question for yourself uh, but first of all obviously it's a game it's about having fun pick the characters you like the playstyles you like uh, if you want to know her playstyle before we go into a full deep dive into her uh, it's going to be high burst damage with a bit of ramp up she has moxie reduction and she has self-sustain uh, and that is the basic playstyle now the banner itself. Uh, first of all, if you're a new player watching this and you're about to do some re-rolling, I think it's a great banner to re-roll. First exclusive banner. Yes, she does come to standard banner 1.4, but in general, I think it's a good banner to roll on because you also have the balloon party. Now, this brings me into the next point, which is balloon party. If you don't have another healer, maybe you didn't want to build the source and the only other one that you have uh, is uh, DK or maybe you didn't want to build DK, whatever the situation is. If you need a healer, balloon party is a fantastic killer as a five star on this banner so maybe doing some pulls on this banner to try and get a balloon party um is a play just know that if you're going for a balloon party and you don't want melania you do run the risk of getting that melania and then ruining up your setup for the next pity that you're looking for now as for melania herself i think she's a fantastic damage dealer uh and if you decide to pull for her i don't think it's a bad pull i don't think there's anything that's a bad pull i think she's actually a fantastic character myself personally uh on my two accounts one i'm saving for pickles the other i'm saving for tooth fairy and changeling uh, and those are the next three characters we have which are pickles uh, who's a great general support. Uh, Tooth Fairy, who's a great general healer plus offensive support, especially for crit uh, units. Uh, and then we have Changeling, who is more specific that she needs the specific poison team, but it is very, very strong. So there's the three units coming, and I think you've got to look at it holistically and go, where do I want to take my account and what do I want to do? Um, and say, let's say you're not stressed about poison meta, you've got enough good supports, maybe you've got like an Anne Lee and stuff, and you've built a Beacon Bloom, and you're pretty set for support units. And the only one upcoming that you really want is Tooth Fairy. Well, then you're probably going to have enough depending on RNG and stuff like that and depending on spending levels to go for Melania and then her as well the only other consideration I would take into account is if you're maining something like a Centurion, Centurion is beast, Melania is beast uh, and these two are fighting for a similar position because in this early game phase that we're in I feel like you kind of want to diversify your damage dealing options even though Melania does have the additional supportive capabilities with the Moxie reduction, they are still both the beast units, uh, once again Melania is going to be a mental damage dealer and centurion is is uh reality so they are a bit different but in general i think the beast factor is something you don't want to double dip on too early in the game so that would be another thing to think about but those are all the considerations that i would have whether pulling for her and i'll let you guys make your decision based on that so let's go through her kit and the basic way it works her ultimate it's all about her ultimate so what we're going to do down here is we're going to look at uh her insight first so after casting the ultimate gains one stack of fixed plan fixed plan ultimate power increase by 12% stacks up to six times. When she gets to inside three, basically every time she ults, she will gain two stacks of fixed plan. So after three ults, she has a, a boost of 72, is that right? 72% uh, ultimate power. Now, the other thing that I want to mention before we get any further is that if we go over here into Psycubes, we've got the event Psycube that we're all getting in 1.1. And this thing is just like tailor made for her. This is like specifically for her. We've got ultimate might at base up to 18% when you max it out at level 60. Then for the amplification, uh, if they cast a single target ultimate, damage dealt increased by 5% stacks up to three times. So the exact same amount of ults that take her to stack her own 72% ult boost, she will gain the three stacks of this, which is 15 to 27% extra damage which is really, really strong. 
So as you can see, it's really nice that you do have a just a, a custom made uh, side cube for her as well. I just wanted to make note of that. But let's go back to Melania herself. So her kid, her kid revolves around using her ultimate pretty quickly. Now, when she uses her ultimate on top of gating the stacks of the damage increase, she's also going to get one stack of Thief Master, uh, which is going to be really solid because that is going to be what enhances her other abilities. Now, her first ability is an absolutely fantastic one. At base, and I'm going to talk about the Thief Master in, in a second. So this ability, if casted while in the Thief Master state, meaning directly after her ultimate, uh, it's going to steal one of one moxie from the enemy so it's gonna be a plus one for her and a negative one for the enemy and that's the exact same no matter which uh which star rating the attack is but at one star it's just going to deal damage unless you're in thief master and you get the benefit of effect at two star it's going to deal damage and be a negative one for the enemy target on their moxie at three star it's going to deal damage and it's going to be a negative one for them and a plus one for you effectively a steal of moxie so this ability is fantastic because even if you're not in the Thief Master state granted by the ultimate, if you get it to two star, you can still steal one moxie, uh, sorry, not steal, negative one moxie from the enemy. Now, this is really nice because you can interrupt enemies' ultimates while they're already in the queue. If an enemy has an ultimate queued up and you reduce moxie, it means that ultimate gets canceled and they can't unit, use it and the enemy has essentially wasted an action, which is absolutely fantastic. I love this. And when we look at something like... Um, What's the healer or the source, the three star? You know, her ultimate when you've got her at max portrays, she's going to reduce like all the moxie off the enemy, which is fantastic. But more than that, I would rather have something like this where you can use it more frequently and interrupt more often. I think this is an absolutely great disruptive ability to have on a massive nuking uh, unit. And I think it's really, really strong. The other thing is if you're using this after her ult, you're stealing that one moxie from the target, meaning you can use this as an interrupt. So let's say you've got like a two star of this and a one star of it. After you use the ultimate, you can use the one star on one enemy to interrupt their ultimate, use the two star on the other enemies to interrupt their ultimate. There are a lot of advanced plays that you will get into. But in general, I love the moxie steal, the moxie reduction ability. Um, and if you look at it at a three star with the Thief Master state, Essentially, if you use this at a three star in th Thief Master State, it's going to be a plus three for you and a minus two for the enemy. The plus three comes from plus one for the actual attack itself, uh, plus one for the base moxie that you gain from the attack, and plus one again for the, um, the steal. So you're getting a plus three from one attack, which is pretty nice in my opinion. Moving on from that, we have the uh, second ability. Now, this one to me isn't as pivotal as this ability, but it's still nice in a clutch situation. Essentially, it's just two target damage with a bit of leech tied into it. Now, and that and the damage just goes up with the stars. Now, if in the Thief Master state, you get Moxie plus one and extra leech. The Moxie plus one's the big thing. It's not a steal this time. If this was a steal, it would be completely broken because then you could steal from two enemies and it would be a plus two for her and a minus one for two enemies, which would just be absolutely cracked in my opinion. Uh, but it's still really solid in itself because you do have that leech, which adds some survivability into a kit. Now, I don't think this makes her uh, like eternity levels of solo ability, but it can get her out of a pinch. Maybe, uh, you know, you lose your healer and you're trying to just finish off a stage. She can get that extra bit of leech to help herself survive. So that is another thing. But once again, used in the mar Thief uh, thief master state it is going to be a plus one now i want to talk about her rotation so essentially you want to get her to alt as fast as possible so the the way i see it and we're going to talk about her portrays in a sec because her p2 is absolutely insane in my opinion for the efficiency of the character but essentially if you wanted to do uh alt every second turn that would mean the turn after you have your alt you'd need to have two well two two one stars two like two Two of the same card at the same star rating because you'd need to move to merge and then use two attacks. The reason, the way that works uh, is the move to merge would be the move is plus one, the merge is plus one, and then you've got two attacks, which would both be plus one. So that would bring you to four, but because you'd be in Thief Master State, it would be plus five, you'd have your ult ready. So it's a bit tricky to go uh, alt every second turn like this. I think in general, the play she's normally going to get is going to be alt, then two turns without the alt, and then alt on the turn after that. I think that's going to be the general play that she does get, but there will be situations in, you can, when, in which you can do alt, no alt, alt. It's not as common, 
but there will be situations just know that you need to move and merge and then use two abilities to actually make it happen which is once again not the easiest thing in the world to do but you can get lucky on some flops and get in a lucky merge but we're not going to rely on that obviously so she is rng dependent in that way where you can snowball a lot faster but something that i wanted to mention which is really nuts. I don't want to spend too long on this, but if you are a spender or if you're afraid to play that absolutely love this character and you're like, you know, what's a good portray level if I want to go that little bit further? P2 is insane because P1 gives you the, the damage on the ultimate, which is where the main source of her damage comes from. And then P2 gives her this, which is ridiculous. So after her ult, she's going to gain an uh, additional one stack. So she's get two stacks of Thief Master. And this, whoops, sorry, my head's blocking it. And this honestly... It just feels like it unlocks the the snowball ability for her two turn alt playstyle, because essentially after the turn you alt, all you need is two of her cards, and you can alt again in the turn after that. So I'll give you guys a walkthrough. So if you alt one turn, the next turn you only have two cards. Now this isn't as efficient as if you had three or something like that. But it's just a way you can do it to get a faster ultimate. It's not going to be optimal in every situation because obviously you have healing concerns. You have all that sort of stuff. So like maybe you want to get your buffs up. There's a lot to consider. But in general, if you have this P2, it means you ult one turn. The next turn, you only have two cards. You just move one of them randomly to get one plus one moxie. Then you use those two attacks. There's another two moxie brings you up to three. But because they will both be under the Thief Master state, you get an extra plus two because you've used two abilities and each of them give you an extra plus one. Doesn't matter what abilities they are. So her at P2 feels super efficient. I feel like it feels a lot more efficient. Uh, and then you can use first melody if you have to, because what I find normally is uh, if I use first melody, I'm probably always getting two of each character. Now, it depends on what how many ults you have queued, but like the first melody is going to be fantastic for this when you've got it like this. And I feel like this is one of those things that really annoys me that it's not in her um, inside because it would make her feel like such a fun character, but it's not going to be available to too many people. However, keeping in mind, she does go onto the standard banner in 1.4. So eventually, when she rinses around in 1.4, you will be getting that chance to get her on your off banner pools, standard banner, anything like that. So so eventually people will get her to that point. And if you do, this is where I think she becomes absolutely cracked and a lot more efficient. Yes, she can do the same things uh, at one copy, but it requires a lot more RNG and luck involved to do it. But in general, I think nonetheless, if we look over here at the tier list, even on Pride Win, if we look on the CN meta in the late game, she is still regarded as an ST unit. Uh, in the early game, she is dropping down a little bit because she is more of a late game specialist, smashing bosses and stuff like that. Longer fights, you've got teams built that can keep her around and support her properly. Uh, but in general, she is still a fantastic unit. But uh, like I said at the start, the problem is there are a lot of fantastic units in the game. Uh, for damage dealing capabilities and we have got more units coming in the future we've got pickles we got uh tooth fairy and then we've got also uh where is it changeling coming as well over here in the next like as and so we've got pickles tooth fairy changeling all coming as the next three characters so that is the one issue she has the other issue is that we also have another standard banning unit that kind of competes for her position which is a beast damage dealer now melania is going to be mental damage and centurion is uh is i always say physical is reality damage but they are both beasts so they are competing for that spot so if i like on my account there i've got a built centurion it's kind of hard for me to want to then go ahead and pull for Melania straight away when I've already got a beast damage dealer. And early on, I want to diversify my roster of damage dealers and, you know, building another beast straight away isn't really the way to do that. So that is the other issue that she does face. But in general, I think she's a fantastic unit. I, I really like her playstyle. I really like the interrupts. Uh, if there was PvP in the game, I would be 100% pulling for her because I feel like she would be super fun in PvP. Uh, but at the moment, I still think she is a massive, massive single target Yuka with some decent disrupt and the ability to self-sustain, which to me just makes an all-round great unit. But her downfall is there are a ton of great units in the game already and still coming that people might want to save for. So that is my summary on her pre-release. I will do a guide for her or more videos on her when she does release but let me know are you pulling for her? what do you think is she good is she trash i'm curious to see your guys thoughts but as always thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i look forward to seeing the next one cheers